five of five for you from from three Draymond, especially in the first half. I mean, just how good has your shot been feeling, and and is it really just defense sagging off of you that's making you that encouraged to shoot from the perimeter so much? I had kind of a couple weeks stretch where I, uh, my shot didn't feel good at all. Um, but really just standing in the gym, putting the work in and, <clears throat> you know, taking what the defense gives me. If they're going to sag off like they were, um, you know, I knew coming into this game that they were going to play like that. So I just wanted to come out and not hesitate to shoot, uh, knowing that they're not going to close out and just raise up and shoot it with confidence. Are they the most egregious team? <laughs> yeah, they are, um, for sure. But it's different when it's AD out there because, you know, that covers... He covered up so many mistakes or, you know, um, you can find things to him. So it's a totally different look when he's not on the floor. Steve said you worked really hard, you know, on your shot over the summer. What did some of that work into? Um, <clears throat> interestingly enough, it was uh, mind work, uh, you know, and body work. You know, not necessarily, I mean, I did a lot of shooting, um, you know, myself and Travis. Travis put a lot of things in to work on my base, like how I'm getting in and out of my shot, because uh, I think that's one of the, <clears throat> you know, over the years, um, you know, my shot took a dive, and it was in large part that I couldn't get in and out of my hips because my hips was, was messed up. And so uh, it's been a process of, getting my movement patterns right. And so that's been Travis, um, Rick, Danny, uh, my trainer in the summer, James, and Pilates with Alana, just doing a bunch of different things to kind of get my body moving the right way. And, you know, if, get my shot all in one motion. It was kind of a hitchy, and, but I was just trying to create power because I couldn't get the power from my hips. And so it's been a whole process. Um, and then, like I said, I think the most important part has been the mental work. Because uh, once you lose confidence in something, in this league, it's, it's impossible to do, you know? And so I had to gain my confidence back, which was the biggest piece of it all, in my opinion. What are some ways you were able to do that? Um, well, number one, it starts with putting the work in. You know, if I put the work in uh, all summer and then coming into the season and trusting it and... You know, I think uh, one of the biggest things for me was coming into the season, going in the training camp and hitting shots and then seeing the confidence that my teammates gained in me. Uh, and once, you know, once, like, it got to a point in, you know, we were doing those mini camps and uh, training camp. Like, I shoot a three and Steph will just take off running back. And, like, it go in and that's the best feeling in the world that he had that confidence in me. And so I think that was a huge part of it, uh, getting a lot of work in with, with the guys over the summer and, you know, kind of coming into the season and their confidence changed, which helped me change my confidence. Hey, Dre, this has been a challenging season for you in terms of basketball with gamers to accept a new role. Um, you know, you feel like you need to be Newcomers or young guys' expectations. Um, how have you thought? I, obviously, you know, Clay has been very vocal on the conversation that he had. How have you thought he's just doing the job? I think he's done a good job. Uh, you know, it's a tough, tough thing to handle. You know, when you look at the history, excuse me, the history, um, going to battle every night with the guys who you've gone to battle with at the highest level of time and time and time again. Uh, you know the trust that you have and the bond that's there. And yet, <clears throat> and I think in any relationship in the world, the toughest thing is the tough conversations. You know, uh, nobody wants to have the tough conversations. And yet that's Steve's job, you know, to have those tough conversations. And it doesn't always feel great because, again, there's, there's so much history there. And, you know, to go to someone and say, yo, we want like, we want you to come off the bench after all that you've done, that's a hard thing to do. Uh, but I think ultimately when you have the type of guys that we have, you ultimately know that the most important thing is to win. And so whatever that takes, uh, that's what we're all willing to do. And you've seen it over the years, right? Like it wasn't just Clay this year. It was in a playoff series, Steph coming off the bench pretty much the entire playoff series. Um, myself coming off the bench. Clay went through it this year, but, you know, and there was this big story around it, but 
he was actually the last one to go through it. Um, you know, me and Steph came off the bench at pivotal times before he did, you know, and so uh, I think it just says a lot about the character of the guys in this organization and just riding with whatever it is that we think and, you know, the coaching staff think is best for the team and then going out there and whatever minutes it is that you're out there making sure we're we're given what it takes to win. You were having a conversation with the referee going into one of the timeouts tonight. It felt like six or seven teammates at various points came over and were almost trying to direct you away from them. Are you feeling that? And what is kind of that, that goal right now? We're clearly there. They seem to be a little bit more on high alert. Yeah, it was cool. Steph was standing there, um, which was great because he heard how the referee talked to me, and he went immediately from talking to me to like, yo, you can't talk to him like that. You know, and I think that's the wackest part about it. Like, you can say and speak to me however you feel, but if I say something back, it's a tech. Like, that's whack to me. You know, you miss a call, God clubbed me across the face, and, and then you like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, get out of my face. Like, who, like, who are you? You know, like... <laughs> You don't just get to not talk. Like, you missed a call. You can't get mad because you missed a call, you know? And so it's a little crazy. Uh, but I appreciate the guys being there because it's a bit frustrating. Like, Austin gashed, gashed his elbow, hit me in the teeth. And it's no foul. I get hit in the face every single game, and I get no foul call. I hit somebody in the face, I get thrown under the jail. But when I get hit in the face, we don't see it. I, I don't. I get hit in the face every single night, right? And it's, I, I, I'm not sure one time it's been caught. But I, I b fucking blow my breath on somebody, and, and we're reviewing it for a flag and file. I don't get it. It's crazy to me. And, and Draymond, how would you compare what Steph has shown with his play and leadership to compared to all his other great seasons? Oh, I think it's been wonderful. Obviously, his play is still right up there at the top of the league with the best players in the league. But his leadership has continued to grow uh, throughout the years, and I've had the honor of watching that growth over the course of the past 12 years. And he's just taking on more and more of a leadership role each and every year, giving guys more and more to follow. And... You know, when he speaks, you have to listen. When he speaks, um, you know, it, it carries so much weight. And so it's just been good to see him grow. I, I, obviously, uh, his best job ever when it comes to leading uh, because he just continues to improve and improve. And, man, I've had, I've had more fun watching him grow as a leader than watching him grow as a player because growing as a leader, he's always been a leader, but he's grown vocally as a leader. You know, he's grown... Uh, he, you know, he's he's right on something as soon as it happened. You know, he's not going to, you know, before he would kind of just watch things play out. And then when he really needed to say something, he said, now something happens. He's right on top of everything. And I think it's been um, such a joy to watch because and the reason that's been more fun for me to watch than the growth of his game is because that one uh, uh, requires him to step outside of his comfort zone. And yet now it seems like a very comfortable space for him. And that's, that's, um, that's beautiful to watch. When you can get comfortable with the uncomfortable, uh, that, that's the ultimate growth that we all can have as individuals, and he's done that. Steve said that this season... In the past, I guess he's kind of held your breath during the non-step minutes. And this season, he's feeling really encouraged, actually, and excited about those non-step minutes. What have you seen, just, I guess, evolution-wise over the years of those non-step minutes leading up to, to this year? Oh, there's been times where those minutes have been great for us, and there's times where those minutes have been a complete disaster. Uh, however, you know, um, nowadays, those minutes are with another Hall of Fame point guard running the team. And so that makes a ton of a difference. Um, you know, when you got CP out there being the catalyst, getting us into things, uh, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer. So that you can credit a lot of it to that. And obviously other guys are doing their job, you know, not taking anything away from anybody else, but don't ever underestimate the value of, of a point guard on the floor. Um, so when Steph's off the floor, we have another first battle Hall of Famer on the floor, and that makes all the difference.
Yeah, with the way you guys are playing right now, uh, how confident are you, are you and your guys that you guys can make a, a run right here? Uh, very confident. You know, we've kept that same sentiment all along, uh, just about what, what we feel this team is capable of. And, you know, at times this year, it hasn't always come together for us, but I think it's coming together at the right time. And, you know, we always feel like if we get a chance, um, we know what it takes. So just just make, got to make sure we give ourselves the opportunity. I had a feeling you and Chris would get along once you were on the same team. What's that? What's that been like personally, especially? It's been incredible. Um, personally, uh, you know, the relationship that we've built off the floor. Uh, we actually stay in the same building. He stayed one floor above me. When when he came and moved one floor above me, I was like, ah, he just want to be above me. <laughs> like, ah, he's keeping it up. No, but um. You know, it's, it's been such an honor and a joy to get to know him, his family, um, his entire crew of people that he has around him. Like, you, see, you know, one thing I've learned about him, he's not, like, he doesn't hoard anybody. You know, some people hoard things. Some people hoard people. Like, if you, like, see, what, where'd you get this? How, who's doing this for you? He's like, oh, it's this person doing it. Like, you want the number? Here you go. Like, he's, he's just uh, always trying to lend a helping hand. And... You know, he's a, <clears throat> what I've grown to learn is, in a lot of ways, he's a lot like me. And, you know, not oftentimes do you run into that, you know, where, uh, you know, it's it's never really about him. He's always looking to do for someone else. And um, it's been very refreshing and fun, um, refreshing to deal with someone like that, fun to get to know someone like that. Uh, but, you know, and then on the court, he helps me a ton. You know, when you, like, we can play off each other without saying a word. Uh, and, you know, it's even more fun on the defensive end than it is the offensive end. Um, but I think that, the, you know, the, when, when you have us two out there, the IQ level r raises tremendously. And, um, you know, it makes for great lineups on both sides of the floor. So it's been... Fun off the court has been fun on the court. We, you know, we gamble on the plane. That's always a blast. Like, um, yeah, it's been it's been a real joy to play alongside Chris. Because if I never got a chance to play with, uh, you know, play with him in the NBA, I'm not sure we would ever said a word to each other. You know, and so it's funny how God works. Um, you know, we came down early the other day, and it's me, Clay, C. My family was on play, and Trevor Ariza. And I said to Trevor, I'm like, could you ever have seen this? Like, we're sitting across from each other. And he's like, nah. I'm like, we talk about this every time we get on a plane. Like, you know, you're having such a good time with each other. And he's like, man, I could have never seen this coming. And so it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and then also helpful. I've learned a ton from him this year uh, as far as leadership, um, things, different things that he's seeing, how to process them, I've learned a ton. So it's been a complete honor for, in every aspect. Who's the bigger trash talker? Who's the best between you two? Um, I am definitely the bigger trash talker for sure. Um, but C just kind of needle you where it hurts. Like he, he not gonna talk much to you unless he has to talk, and then he gonna hit you where it hurts fast. Like he not gonna go back and forth. Uh, he just gonna kind of say something to kind of stop it right there. So. A little different, uh, the way we go about things, but... So I would say I'm the bigger trash talker. The best, I don't know, he'll, he'll, he'll hit you where it hurts fast. Is he knocking on your door, you know, every other... <laughs> no, but we have watched some games together, uh, which was fun, you know, just, like I said, watching games with him and hearing, yeah, hearing how he see the game. Uh, it's always a pleasure because sometimes I'll be seeing something different and he'll break something. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Like, that's a totally different way of looking at it, you know. Uh, the things that he sees, like, I, I like to think of myself as a point guard. And the things that he sees as a point guard, like, I just get to learn from, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch. Um, it's amazing to learn from him. It's been really good for me. Quickly, right. how big a difference do you see between... Uh, nine and eight, and how hungry would you guys be to maybe lead the day? The biggest difference is you get one extra game to, to win two, uh, which is a big deal. Um, 
So if we can get to eight, that's incredible. You know, we love two, two, two swings, two, two bites of the apple. So uh, if we can get to eight, great. Um, but if not, you know, it is what it is. We just got to win the games that we got to win. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. A couple more in here. Short.